At this point in the ascension process, one of the difficulties that's going on is figuring out the difference between very realistic seeming, vivid waking dreams and the actual process of acting out. And uh, this is because people have forgotten or are not skilled at just learning the skills of um, timeline merges and timeline um, surfing and uh, timeline walkthroughs and the same for dimensions, the same sorts of skills for dimensionality, multi-dimensionality. And so they're not always sure whether what they're seeing is has ever really happened. It might be happening in a parallel timeline or dimension, for instance. And so one of the things that we all need to pick up on is if, if it seems that some action has occurred that, uh, that we hope hasn't occurred, even if we think we did it, you know, it's very possible that, that nothing happened and that we didn't do it, uh, or that it happened in an alternate timeline and that we're optimizing the timeline, or in an alternate dimension, and then we optimize the dimension. And it therefore, that more untrue, less loving reality no longer exists at all. I know this is kind of hard to conceive of, but the thing to do, if we have a, a especially in times of highlight, if we have a, a, a very vivid waking dream, is to check the physical world and see what's so. So I know it's kind of also kind of difficult because as the timelines have been merging lately, some of the phenomena that have been occurring is things have been disappearing and appearing in the in the in the current awareness timeline with no particular explanation. Subtle changes occur, you know, which I think we just have to to learn to take it take it as it is and just surf the waves in that regard. Now to get on with this video, that that's just my thought on it is that things change right now and 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 everything is new every moment and so there'll be a few discrepancies as everything dovetails together. Nothing to be too worried about. <laughs> so now at the beginning of this video, I was talking about the current difficulty in discriminating between um vivid waking dreams and otherwise known as astral stories that are circulating on the clear plane and uh, actual instances of physically acting out these stories and these dreams in the real world, what we call the third dimension. So now at the beginning of this video, I was talking about the current difficulty in discriminating between um, vivid waking dreams and otherwise known as astral stories that are circulating on the clear plane and uh, actual instances of physically acting out these stories and these dreams in the real world, what we call the third dimension. Here's a possible instance. The, the parents of, so, of a ch some children and teenage children in a family, they uh, they're stressed out by the incoming light, and they take a little um, a sip of wine at dinner. The children uh, who, who have never had any drugs or like that, they, they're hearing on the unconscious plane, they're hearing from their parents, you know, I feel so stressed out, I've got to, I've got to have like some alcohol. Should they go out and wangle away to, to get completely drunk, all right? So, so there's this ratcheting up effect happening because of a glom within an atoll family. The parents just want a little drink of wine at dinner and the children get completely drunk like that. And it may happen a time or two before the parents, if it comes to their attention. And, and, and the parents wonder what the children are up to, why the children are doing this, but in fact, it's their own subconscious-like intention that's, that's driving the subconscious response of the children. Um, so there's that. And then there's another instance that has to do with families, uh, with grown-up children which are still maintaining contact with each other even though the children moved out or like that. Let's say 
mm, the parent is really, and, and the children look up to the parents, you know, and they're listening on a subconscious plane to what the parents are saying, right? So, so the parents become really angry at another person. Okay, and, and they're always thinking, they're always thinking, that person did this, that person did that, like that. They're always grumbling in their subconscious mind about it. And I wish that person would, and, and then the subconscious mind does these cursing things to, you know, curse this person with like this, or curse this person with a, that, you know, all kinds of things. And, and the children pick up on it on a subconscious, rising to consciousness plane. And the child takes that just in the board plane of, uh, plane of forces, veil of unconsciousness, forgetfulness area, the child uh, goes into a sort of a fugue state and says, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. I want to please my parents. Like, my parents want me to do it. They told me so, right? And they act that out. The parent actually never had such an intention, right? And eventually, it comes to the parent's uh, attention that this has happened. And they ask the child, why did you do this? And the child says, but you told me to. You told me to. I did it to please you. I wanted you to love me. And the parent is like scratching their head. They're going, oh my God, I wonder what this is about. And it's the same story. It's because the parent is the leader. Even if the child has grown, it doesn't matter. The parent is the leader and the parent has, uh, has walled off feelings and emotions, mostly feeling-filled thoughts repressed that are that are that are like repeating over and over again that's like Sam Scaris what they are and the children are hearing this over and over again only they're rising to consciousness and what they think is that the parent really wants them to do this thing and they love the parents so they do that thing that so so children if you've noticed that happening in your parent the thing to do is to bring it to conscious awareness Talk to your parent, either on the phone or face-to-face, eye-to-eye. Say, I've been hearing this from you on the unconscious plane. I'd like to know what your feelings really are about it, whether your love of me depends upon my breaking the law in this way or like that, you know. And sure and begora, the parent will be there to tell you, I, I never knew I was saying this thing. No, I don't want you to do it. All right? You have to discriminate between the third dimension and the fourth dimension. You have to arrive in an understanding of your own multidimensionality and not get stuck in the plane of forces between the two where it's not clear where you are, you know? And, and you do that by taking conscious action in the physical world. Here's another instance. A person might hear on the astral plane a person that they know, an acquaintance or friend or a family member, who seems to be um, just freaking out, really out there emotionally. And what they might hear is actually the soul wounding that's repressed of that person, mm, rather than the actual awareness self of the person that presents itself as personality to the real world. And hearing this over and over again, on the psychic or astral plane, they may come to the conclusion that that person is mentally ill or like that, when in fact nothing is going on that doesn't ordinarily go on except that they themselves are becoming more aware of repressed emotions of other people on the astral plane. Consequently, uh, not uh, still failing to distinguish between these two planes, the fourth dimension with the emotions and the third dimensions with the physical beingness of a person, they went leap to the conclusion that they should act out. And that might include just all kinds of things that, that are considered an invasion of privacy. Uh, they might call the police and ask the police to take a, a check up on the person. They might order a drug raid in an in, in extreme instance. They, and, and they might feel that all these things are justified because here is a person that appears to be perfectly normal when they talk to them, but they're hearing all these um, uh, distorted, repressed uh, uh emotional issues coming up from that person that must indicate that there's something terribly wrong with them. 
Okay, so this is another like way that we have to avoid acting out. We should check up on people on the physical plane, and if they seem normal on the physical plane, let it go at that, you know? And the funny thing is that this other person might be thinking the same thing. They might be hearing, um, for you, the person that's thinking of acting out, you know, calling for the, the riot squad and so forth. This other person might be hearing the same thing from you and thinking the same thing about you. Yet every time they talk to you, you seem like a real, real regular person. They don't know what to think, you know. And so the answer lies in this. The emotional plane is the land of dreams. The physical plane is physical reality. They're two separate planes. And so we take a step in the physical realm to determine whether, it, whether or not a, a, a further step needs to be taken in the physical realm. We don't rely on our astral input, which is very difficult because repressed emotions repeat like in a cycle. It's like uh, the, the a perpetual motion emotion machine, right? Keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. And it repeats while we're asleep and like that if people are tuned into us. And, and it's hard. It's hard not to act on that. But that's the skill that we're learning.